Hello everyone. I have with me a very distinguished personality in cardiology. He was the ex-chairman of cardiovascular division of Cleveland Clinic, a world famous Cleveland Clinic. And he is here with me to discuss a most important health subject of the day. And that is primary prevention of coronary heart disease which results in heart attack. And this in heart attack now is a number one illness or number one catastrophe in the young all over the world. And especially India tops the list. Therefore, I am going to discuss with Dr. Nishan, who is an expert on primary prevention. He has done a lot of work on it, that what we should do to prevent ongoing coronary heart disease amongst the young in our country. Well, it is really an enormous problem. And, uh, you know, we are recognizing increasingly that in countries like India, the rise in the incidence of coronary heart disease, particularly among younger people, uh, is really a, an emerging catastrophe. Uh, as lifestyles change and as, you know, people become, you know, better off, uh, they overeat, uh, they gain weight, uh, they drive their, people drive their cars everywhere and don't get exercise. And if we don't act, then this problem is only going to get worse. Uh, in large areas of India, as I, you know better than I, uh, the incidence of heart attack in, in younger people, uh, diabetes in younger people, and it doesn't take a lot of obesity, just a little bit of increase in waist circumference, and people become insulin resistant, and they, have more, they become more diabetic, and they develop premature coronary disease. We need to do something now to prevent this problem from getting a lot worse. And I know you've been working for many years on prevention, and so I'd like to talk with you more about what can we do. Uh, well, you know, it is very easy to talk about the lifestyle changes to be done to the young people, but we have to be very careful when we ask them to do certain lifestyle changes because they are not in control of the situation. The present situation is such that their responsibility of making two ends meet and also raise the family in this competitive world is such that they are not able to give attention to their health, which should be a priority. So we have to actually advise in such a way it is most practical and easy to accomplish or easy to put in practice. And the other important thing, apart from this, is the stress management. Because a lot of stress, the stress is the, and stress is a very important cause of uh, premature coronary heart disease. And the young in India are the most talented people. They have made a name all over the world for their, for their expertise in every field. Therefore, I, who have been practicing cardiology for the last more than five decades, have felt that now my top priority is how to really put into practice primary prevention with the help of some of my colleagues who are also interested in the same way. And for the stress management, we started a program now which has been called the Universal Healing Program. It's a name and for the last 27 years we have been doing it. And the practice of Universal Healing Program, the, it's very, very simple. And I have got an experience with at least more than 10,000 patients who have practiced it. So after practicing this program, especially the practice of Shavasana in this program, which is easy to do and does not require much time to do. And that has given them inner strength to make the lifestyle changes. Dr. Nissen was present, fortunately, in a conference which we had on 5th and 6th of January this year at Ahmedabad in a premier institute established by Mahatma Gandhi in 1920. In that place, we had this holistic cardiology conference this year where Dr. Nissen was present and he could see what was the importance of the primary prevention of this disease. So now I would request Dr. Nissen because he has got a very, very definite lines on which he can instruct and he can advise. 
this is going to be a, this our dialogue i think it should really reach the topmost echelons of the government in india so that they are, they, they understand this problem and give it a top, top priority because not on, because the young of young of the india are the wealth of the world and i'm i'm very proud to tell you that and therefore i am so much concerned now i'm 84 and my only aim now for the rest of my life what what i'm as a as a cardiologist is to see that we have a very effective primary prevention program now in 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 practice all in all the states of the of india and that cannot be done unless the the the, the our, our our dear pm you know takes it as a as a as a very important uh, uh well it has to be a national priority and uh. you know i think that several of the things that we've talked about that i think make a lot of sense one is to start young uh, -huh. uh once bad habits are or have begun they're much harder to reverse than they are to prevent in the first place so you know getting into the schools and you know in people when they're in their teenage years and as at an adolescence and getting people to understand what a proper diet is like uh but also exercise programs in the schools uh and carrying those on as people get into their you know uh, into their careers now it's much harder as you say because people are busy and they're they're being successful and they're they're doing all their their enterprising activities but if they don't uh, see to their health then a lot of that effort is not going to result in 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 good outcomes for them and their families so you know diets that are that are very high in sugar uh, clearly a huge problem uh so the simple carbohydrates but but pr particularly sugars clearly have a problem they raise the triglyceride levels which you know and they also raise the risk of of diabetes and they also promote obesity you know sugared soft drinks and many of these things so fast food uh you know i was a little surprise there were a number of years between when i first went to india and when i more recently went to india but you know there continues to be an explosion of availability of fast food uh which is generally not very healthy and we've got to find a way to change these things and do it early if we're going to prevent this disease in middle age and and older and one important thing <coughs> and a very important one according to me is the use of tobacco in any form yes and when these young people get stressed they easily get to this habit and this habit is easy to easy to sort of fall prey to and once you use tobacco it's very difficult to give it up highly addictive highly addictive. now i don't know what is happening in india but in the united states now they're shifting from smoking tobacco to to vaping i know is va is vaping coming on in india yeah. 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 the tobacco is used in various forms in it yes. various forms yeah by inhaling it chewing it the uh, rubbing it it everywhere in various ways they they, they do it when yeah. they are, when you ask them to stop smoking uh, in various forms like uh, the the indian make bds or, or or cigarettes of any kind but instead of that they 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 chew tobacco in different ways and all that yeah so tobacco in various forms is being used by the young when they are stressed and according to my experience the only the most difficult thing most difficult uh, uh, addiction to get rid of is tobacco addiction it's very difficult it's, uh, it's yeah, very, very difficult, difficult. The, yes so the other thing i think that i i certainly see is the ob epidemic not just uh, in india but everywhere in the world of obesity seems to not be stopping it continues yes and there's now india is also now catching up with they're catching up states, which is a big problem here but now in india also as you say you know they they and people seem to be completely careless about everything that is regarding they they think that there is enough time we'll think about the health later on yeah. but at the moment we are so busy with uh, with with so many things there is a keen competition in getting ahead in every field I I mean more the more progress the better but but there's no no consideration at all about even a even a modest physical exercise even modest physical exercise is not done by Indians And what's interesting about it is that it doesn't take 
you know, uh, you don't have to become a marathon runner yeah. to improve your health. <laughs> Even modest amounts of physical activity Boy, have yeah. a very beneficial effect on both the body weight, uh -huh. but also on cholesterol and on blood pressure and all of these things. And uh, I, I would think that, uh, that this is an area where government action in terms of encouraging you know, physical activity would be uh, very important. Yes, now that you have brought this subject, I would say that in a very strong family history, very strong family history, I would say that the, uh, the lipid profile done early on and assessment of LDL, as you said, it is a, you know, most culprit cholesterol, which re and ends up in plaque and the, co and the clotting in the coronary art and the clot formation in the coronary arteries. So we have now something to do with the test, some basic test to be done to know what we should do for these young people. And there is another one which is in a very bad family history. We have now come across a very simple, inexpensive, but still quite a useful test like coronary calcium score. Yeah. And then if we find that there is a beginning of atherosclerosis in a young person, even at the age of 20 or 25, we can now. I'm. I'm. Uh, one, one, once upon a time, long ago, I was against use of statins. But now, in this last 20 years, the progress is such that now I've begun to believe. Then I use it myself for primary prevention. That statin also should be instituted quite early on, if there is indication in the coronary calcium score or in the abnormal lipid profile. What so the American Academy of Pediatrics um, recently uh, came up with guidelines mm -hmm. where they recommended that a single measurement of cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, be made between ages 11 and 13. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to find those children that are significantly higher than their peers, not to treat them with statins, uh -huh. but to begin lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. And then as they get older, to consider whether or not they would benefit from statins. Uh, as you know, we've done a lot of research with statins. We've shown that they can uh, actually regress. They can actually help to remove some of the plaque from the arteries in people with high cholesterol. So I do think that this is a has been an important treatment, but it should not be used as an antidote for a healthier lifestyle. And I think that you and I agree about that that is a great treatment, but what we really would rather do is prevent the disease than treat it once it's actually occurred. So uh, I would really request you, Dr. Steven, and now that this is a great opportunity, just very briefly, you outline the things, very, very simple guidelines that what is the urgent need by the government and how, you know, because India is a big, vast country with various uh, types of uh, people living in, 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 in dif different habits and all that. But the main thing is uh, what, I am con what I am really concerned because I, I see every day people coming from heart attack at the age of even 25, yes. 20, 30. And this, this is a really very disturbing phenomena. Father bringing the son Grandfather bringing a son, uh, uh, his uh, grandson, with a heart attack story. Yeah. So that again, you see, so the, instead of family history, there's something else operating. Yeah. So all these things are such, you know, therefore I decided that, and I'm so grateful that you took out this time for me to discuss this very vital issue for the whole country, for like India, that now we would like that you just summarize in few points which requires an urgent attention of the of the of the executives in India who can now implement this program through people like us who have had a lot of experience dealing with cardiology in every field and we have we have we, uh, I know you as you had, as we, when we attended that conference we had some luminaries coming from Delhi and all that and they are all with me and we made a pledge all of us made a pledge of primary prevention. Yes. And you and all all who got together made 
signed that pledge. Yes. So we are now committed to that pledge. Yes. So for that, I have taken your time. Well, it's wonderful that you have people that are dedicated to it, but they must have the resources. And the only entity that really, you know, has the kind of opportunity to influence this is the government. The government, of course, represents all the people uh, across the entire country. Uh, and putting programs in place uh, to teach health habits to the young, uh, to intervene uh, on the obesity epidemic, uh, to counter the influence of you know, fast food and all the things that are, 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 are really having a very adverse effect on the health in the Indian population. Uh, you have, you know, as you know better than I, more than a billion people. Uh, and if we don't do anything, the cost to the government will be much, much greater down the road. Right. And so this is an example where a little bit of money spent now can prevent a lot of suffering later and a lot of cost later. And so it is a very uh, strategic time for the Indian government to take strong action. Thank you very much. Thank it's you. It's been really great talking to you.